hydraulic valve positioners are used to regulate the position of hydraulic piston operating valves. The positioner transforms the instrument air signal into a definite piston position. Hydraulic fluid is used for two reasons. It is at a high pressure, approximately 250 psi, so it can produce a great amount of power. Hydraulic fluid is also non-compressible. 250 psi air pressure will supply the same actuating force as 250 psi hydraulic fluid. But since air is compressible, the pressure would have to take time to build up to 250 psi. Fluid is supplied to the positioner by means of a pump. The positioner drain connection is piped to the supply pump suction drum. Always make sure you have the proper supply pressure at the positioner. This is a schematic representation of the system. Is this a motion or a force balance principle? It is motion balance because the feedback is derived by direct mechanical means. A feedback cam is tied directly to the valve stem. Let's assume the input signal raises. The connecting link will raise and lower. The connecting link is tied to the pilot valve. The pilot is essentially a four-way valve. To open the valve, port B is connected to the supply. Port A is connected to the drain. To close the valve, port A is connected to supply. Port B is connected to the drain. So by increasing the input signal, we move the pilot and close the valve. By decreasing the input signal, the pilot reverses the ports and opens the valve. Now let's see how the motion feedback affects the positioner. Let's assume the input increases and the piston begins to move from left to right. This moves the inclined plane from left to right and effectively raises the connecting link. So regardless where the floating pivot is, there is a corresponding inclined plane position that will restore point A to an exact position. The exact position of point A is actually an exact position of the pilot. The exact position is the throttling position of the pilot, or a position where the system is balanced. This is a sectional view of the pilot. Locate the connecting link, the multiplying valve, and the multiplying valve lever. Also locate the amplifier piston, the stem pressure piston, the orifice cups, the oil supply and drain ports, and ports A and B. As the connecting link raises and lowers, the multiplying valve operating lever raises and lowers the multiplying valve stem. A portion of the oil supply goes through the orifice cups. This is equivalent to the restriction orifice in a pneumatic relay. The reduced supply pressure acts upon the amplifier piston. If the multiplying valve lowers, it covers the nozzle, and the pressure builds up against the amplifier piston. The amplifier piston lowers. If the multiplying valve stem raises, the pressure bleeds to the drain. 
The amplifier piston raises because oil supply pressure is pushing the stem pressure piston up at all times. Here you can see the two forces that act upon the pilot valve. The variable pressure is from the multiplying valve. The constant pressure is the supply pressure acting on the stem pressure piston. Notice that the amplifier piston area is larger than the stem pressure piston. This is why a small force on the amplifier piston can make the stem pressure piston lower. Now let's see what happens upon an increase in the instrument signal. The connecting link lowers. This opens the multiplying valve. The amplifier piston is forced up. Port A is connected to supply. Port B is connected to drain. The power piston moves right to left, closing the valve. The return motion linkage also moves right to left. The cable makes the cam rotate counterclockwise. The cam follower lever lowers. The pilot valve balancing lever rotates. The left end lowers. The right end raises. This repositions the multiplying valve, which repositions the pilot valve. The system is rebalanced. The span of the power piston is controlled by the size and shape of the cam. The pilot valve setting, or zero adjustment, is determined by the pilot valve connecting link. It is necessary that the pilot valve be in the mid position when the cam lever and pilot valve balancing lever coincide. To ensure that the two levers are in the correct position, a hollow centering pin is inserted here. The pilot valve connecting link is then adjusted to obtain a neutral position. With the supply on and zero input pressure, adjust the link until the power piston will remain in approximately mid position without creeping. This aligns the pilot valve in a neutral position. The ports A and B are closed. Most valves that use hydraulic valve positioners don't have blocks and a bypass due to their large size. Therefore, if the positioner malfunctions, it has to be bypassed. To do so, obtain the operator's permission to bypass the positioner. Switch the auto manual transfer valve to manual. Operate the open close valve to obtain the proper valve position. This drawing shows the supply and drain lines, the auto manual switch, and the valve positioner. To bypass the positioner, close valves A, B, C, and D. Here is how the valves appear in the drawing. Here is how they look in the field. This is valve A. This is valve B. This is valve C. And this is valve D. Now work exercise one in your workbook.